3%, in which we take one single book, a giant book, a huge book, a long book, break it down section by section, bit by bit, talk about it, analyze it, um, have jokes about it, have fun, have a good time. I'm Chad Post from Open Letter Books, and I'm joined as always by Brian Wood, author of Joy Time Killbox. Hi, Chad. Let me stop you right here. And um, I want to, I listened to another, a real podcast. Um, <laughs> For the one of the first, I don't listen to podcasts. Serial? I to a real one. Was it serial? <laughs> no, I don't, it was. Uh, I think it was. Um, who's that guy? He's like the dead-eyed philosopher guy that like this once everybody. Malcolm died. Gladwell. No, <laughs> no, but I did get some ear tips from him. Uh, <laughs> uh, and how to and how to promote my book um, <laughs> shamelessly? I think it was. Uh, Oh, what's the dude's name? He wrote a book called Lying. Uh, Sam Harris, I think it is. Okay. Uh, but anyways, uh, I notice a lot of people start podcasts, but they tell a little story, like a brief one-minute story, and then more on that in today's episode. And then the music, intro music comes in, and then you do the, hi, welcome to the... So, but this is the, the this is the live part. Like, you can't, we can't, in, that stuff gets inserted post post-production. Oh, no, because you could just start it. Just watch. Here's how you start the show. Ready? We'll pretend what you, what you did doesn't exist, and it starts just like this, starting right now. Many people suffering from ME can find it difficult to get through day-to-day -day life. Simple things, showering, going up and down stairs, getting out of bed. Everything seems like a huge task. Now, imagine you're trapped inside this shell of a body that won't do what you want it to do. And the only way to feel human for you is to write a book. Think of the excuses you have of why you're not writing, why you're not doing that creative thing that you want to do. They kind of pale into comparison with what our protagonist, Shersti, is going through um, in the book Monster Human. Now, if that's not enough, imagine on top of that your form of emotional support, Eric decides to leave just out of the blue. How are you gonna, how are you gonna cope? How are you gonna move on? How are you gonna survive? We'll be covering this in today's episode of the two month review. I will cut that and use that as an as a, as a intro, as, a, as the open, the cold open, do the music and then people can hear the explanation of that afterwards. <laughs> You see, how have, terrible, you see how have, terrible that is? That's so it seems like so long. Like I know it was insufferably long at times. So well, I want to thank you for taking time out of your <laughs> ultra marathon training schedule to come on the podcast too. Are, yeah, seriously. Are, are you going for a hundred mile mile century run? Uh I'm gonna go for 26.2 exactly. <laughs> I can do I can do not a step more. Uh, I, I tried to do, my long run this week was 10 miles and I basically died at mile three. Nice. <laughs> just, nice. I just, I just crawled for seven miles. <laughs> I just, I have no interest in the marathon. I do the half marathon. I like to, to run enough, but I don't want to take the time to run 26 miles. I don't want to take four hours out of my life <laughs> to, to die. Oh, it's every, I hate running. Everything about it is miserable. I don't like any of it. It's pretty miserable. It sucks. Yeah. I didn't mind already today. So I'm good. I'm good. The, um, so yeah, we learned how to pronounce her name, <laughs> Shersti. Yeah, and I nailed that in the intro. See? You did, Shersti Skolmsvall. That that is a big, big addition. There is, um, we have more information about this book from the translator Becky Crook that she told us about little games that were in there, little uh, things that she had to do as a translator, and made it more uh, complicated and that she had to deal with as as issues. But I'm not going to share all that information because I, it'll be better when she comes on the podcast that she can tell us directly, and especially because I don't think we've hit any of the sections in which she talked about these little games and word plays that she had to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll leave that go. But we did take, she did explain to us that it's Shersty, which got it. Although funny, funny story. I, I'm not going to go into any more details than this, but um, uh, could be another guest. But I talked to John O'Brien, the publisher of Delkey Archive yesterday, and he said that he can't pronounce it, and he always calls her Kirsty as well. And she's okay with that. So Kirsty is acceptable. Shersty is correct. And also that he went for the first time he ever went sailing was with her and her dad. So oh, cool. Make it a little bit, little bit more than just like a, a novel or an author writing or whatever. Like there, there's a real person there. And were they she, all were they all wearing lesbian t-shirts? 
I don't, I don't know why. That would have been. I, didn't you? There's that wonderful detail where they wanted to call the the boat the Lambda. I think oh, was, right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And they were gonna get Lambda T-shirts, and then someone in her like Tai Chi class is like, "Uh, you do realize that's all les that's, the, that's the lesbian symbol now?" So. <laughs> I just I, I forgot about that. That would have made me want to get the shirt even more. I know. I would <laughs> I would have great. gone all in on that then. You could a have love, a your... lovely family of just lesbian sailors. Yeah. I like that. It was a I love that. This is this little misunderstanding. So we went through pages 47 through 92 today, uh, which is all of a section called my cabin and then part of a section called the cellar. The cellar is my favorite part of this book so far. I I love this part especially like after the first uh like 10 15 pages it took off for me and i thought that that was spectacular but for people listening i, I think one thing that i'm just going to throw this out here at, for future guests and and for you one thing i think that we can do with this book since it is not super plot driven in a traditional sense um and since it is big and i'm not sure that people are going to guests are going to be able to keep up with us is that i think we could pick like five six pages and give the guests just that and focus on that section and sort of talk around, use that as a way to talk about the other parts or to talk about this book. Cause a lot of it is not necessarily repetitive, but it does get like, it's, it's sort of circular and you can just tell people what's going on and really focus mm -hmm. in on like a few pages. So I have a section for this one. That I think are really, is really the top part. Um, but since it's just the two of us, I know we both read it. We can sort of run through this in a, in a chronological way. Um, and yeah. the first section, my cabin, is is where she gets dumped. Yes, <laughs> like, as, as our new um, as our new podcast friendly introduction, um, <laughs> <laughs> our, our cliche podcast intro uh, <laughs> teases. Yes, this does have one of my favorite lines. So she's so she's at the the cabin. She thinks that she's not human, which is like something I've been obsessed with as a concept for a long time. Um, gives me an idea for music this week. Um, and then it references this fun thing of, of, in four years, an editor will inform me that it's been sent off to the printer. But before that, I'm surrounded on all sides by deafening darkness. It's inside of me too. It fills every last nut. So like her her writing, like she is jumping ahead and saying like in four years, this book will come to fruition, which is interesting because it does ground that like she is going to be successful. Like our protagonist is going to win. Like that, it's a weird, you know, it's a weird setup in a, in a way of like, I want to become a writer. Um, and you could follow that as like a, a challenge that she has to get through and, and maybe attain or maybe not attain. And here she's giving away the fact that she does attain that. And I mean, you know, because you're reading her book, so it's sort yeah. of like already self-explanatory and her book's fucking big. So like she, she wrote a lot. Well, and I know we're kind of, well, I, I can't say we like, I am behind. This is the first thing I've, I've read by her. Um, but you know, knowing that when you read the back of the book that uh, her first published novel was the faster I walk, the smaller I am. Mm -hmm. And then we've learned the first line was I'm 90. I'm afraid of dying. And that's already, that's already been brought up. And then a little bit later, it talks about, uh, as the, as you go closer to the speed of light, the smaller you become. Yeah. Right. And she has an alternate title. So we're kind of getting this like playfulness of like, she's writing her first book. So we know that it is going to be successful. And I meant to grab that. I have it at home. Um, I th so I think it's on the shelf and it might be in the basement, but I, I wanted to grab it and just have it to look through too, as we go through this and see like what changes. I read it years ago when it came out, but it was, I think it was like 2010. Yeah. And I don't know how well it sold, but this giant, this book is just one big giant ploy to get everybody to want to run back and get the first book. The first book was like I, a I, finalist. I, and, I, and I like, I'm, I'm a sucker for it. Like, I'm going to have to go get the other book and read it now. Cause I want to see how they play like, <laughs> The playfulness between the two like i have to know this now so one of my favorite great, bits great job sharesty i'm gonna buy the other book now Way yeah. to go one of my absolute <laughs> favorite bits of this section is when she's like i finished my book it's 38 pages but <laughs> like, i just want to jump to that now no no we have to get to that not yet not yet that, that was very funny that whole but this, this but book gets here, really though, funny in this section yeah it's called my cabin. It's not. It's not. It was built by her great great grandfather. I think it was. Or it, was it? Was it? Or was it built by someone else and they bought it? Because I think there's a, oh. a bit about like the they met the former family that had lived there. Like she talks about lying oh. on the the bed that wasn't her bed. But is that a different section? I'm probably confusing things. Um, but I I, re I recall somebody came in from working in the field and drank a glass of lye and died. Yeah. 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 They yeah. Can, they, they confused it with a. 
with a, <laughs> with a cool beverage. <laughs> with, a, with a vodka or something. <laughs> Just, yeah, t- as you sip that. No, it was really, like, well, it was, like, very sad, but sort of, I don't know, I took it, not, it, humorous isn't the right word, but it was, it was told in such a nonchalant way in the book that. Yeah. Um, it felt oddly humorous. Yeah, I can't remember where that is. And I, I might be mixing these two things up. I remember there's one part where she talks about a cabin where they're going skiing and like the, that the family that had owned it wanted to meet them before oh, they okay. inhabit it. But that might be a separate thing. There might be there might have multiple cabins for all I know. Right here um, on page 47, it says uh, large rooms when my great grandpa built yeah. a cabin. That was a long time ago. He's dead now. He came home thirsty from the field. I don't know if it was a field. And he picked up a glass bottle that was on the porch and downed its contents, which he believed was water, but in fact, it was lie. <laughs> I like that ending part of that. I mix up my great grandparents. The person who built the cabin wasn't the same as the one who downed the lie, and who knows which of them was amiable. <laughs> <laughs> There's like these little like aside moments where she's like clearly having fun and creating the consciousness of this, of this character and like uh, yeah. giving that kind of like, here's the information and then here's my reaction to it almost. They're like, here's my like little little one-liner at the end. There's a, yeah, yeah. I have, I have more to say about that, but I'll wait till I get to the next part. There's sure. another part of like the future that I think is great. So she's talking about her characters, Epsilon and Mathea, which I realized as she did that M-E stands for those two letters mm-hmm. and her thing, that's great. Um, but which I like It's also funny because she's also mentioning how lame like all these. <laughs> there's a support group for Emmy. There's a magazine for Emmy. There's poems about Emmy, and they're that, all awful. That, they're that, all terrible. I, here's her book with characters M and E. You're like, God, like so but, it's like very self-deprecating. <laughs> they, thankfully, they have nothing to do with that. I love this part too, where she's like, she decides that she's going to be an author or whatever, and she's like. Quote, she decided she had to be an author before she could fall in love, end quote. I will write in a future short story. Norway's most prominent poet will say that it's totally unrealistic for anyone to decide such a thing. <laughs> Just a great, great self, self-own self as well. <laughs> I wonder if there's there's got to be some review or some quote where someone's like, this is stupid. I bet <laughs> there is. I bet that that's a real thing. Yeah. I bet that's a real thing. So, yeah. So, she buys her computer. <laughs> She she she's not totally certain of what she bought, which is when I thought that was kind of weird to be honest. Um, that she gets the computer and it's small, and she says a lot about that and you know whatever. Because wasn't she a computer science major? Yeah, but it doesn't mean you use computers. Okay, <laughs> fair. <laughs> Just completely, completely unaware. No, I think it's because um, authors and artists use apples, and then like real computer people don't. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's probably that's probably more. That's true. She's she's probably like, wow, this this Apple is this Mac computer is astronomically expensive, and it's also tiny, and its keyboard yeah. doesn't even work. So yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Great job. That's pretty much the, my experience with Apple. Um, it doesn't come using? with it doesn't come with Linux on it. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. One thing I, I think is interesting too is like a phrasing is this one of. Um, uh, where she talks about going uh, to the study of the computer stuff, it's on 58, and the phrase I say, and maybe the closest I get, can get to an apology is to add mumbling, something about how I'm not exactly in the paint. Which I don't think I've ever heard that that way. I mean, I get it, and I like it, but like, I didn't, it was an interesting, I've never heard that as a phrase. Like, I'm in the red and the black, mm-hmm. but not exactly in the pink. I don't know. No, either, I like it. It might be one of these ones where, uh, that um that Becky was mentioning that there's a lot of things that are like plays on Norwegian spellings and are like intentionally misspelled to create other words, but that does that's a really hard thing to bring into English or can yeah. be very tricky to figure out how best to do that in English. But I mean it makes sense. It's just an interesting phrasing. Yeah. And, then, and the, so we do get um she gets dumped in this one, you said, right? I thought so. She gets she gets more explicitly dumped maybe in the next one. But uh, in the next chapter, they all this part sort of blended together. But like he's like, she's like, will you tell him he's crying? He's like, uh, on page fifty one, she's like, what is it, Eric? And he doesn't respond. And I tremble at night a lot. Eric, what do you? You have to tell me what it is. I said, hurry. Then he began to cry. And then the next page, he says, I know this is a terrible thing to say, but I no longer believe that you're going to get well. Um, and so that, and then uh, 
you're, and then he leaves. I think that you should talk to someone other than me now. And then and your mom can, can you handle yeah. calling her up? Can you ask her if she could come home or should I do it for you? We wept, he wept into our kiss as he left. Then I left too. And maybe I knew I wouldn't come back again. And that's why I took the post-it notes. So like yeah. they, they do break up there, but like it becomes way more explicit in the next section yeah. where she talks about it constantly. But it's interesting because I think that this, like she is sort of mired in this like underwater, like dependent upon him in some way, um, very much struggling with the disease. And I feel like she comes more alive in the next section when she's not with him. Yeah, it's almost like it's kind of the catalyst that sets her out to actually, instead of like having post-it notes and thoughts about the book to actually writing the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I liked about the cabin was you kind of start seeing, I really like seeing mom and dad and their kind of ability and inability to help her. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was very perfectly like loving mom and dad, but still failing. Like it really yeah. reminded my own parents in a way. Who were like, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I don't even perfect. Know if my, I don't even know if my mom considers me a writer yet. Like she still thinks I journal. Like, that's 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 I, that's I, coming. <laughs> yeah. How's your journaling that. going? It's like, oh fuck, man. Like <laughs> <laughs> how's your live blog? <laughs> I went into student debt to be a journalist, like journaling. <laughs> it's like scrapbooking but with a degree. Good Lord, yeah. <laughs> you're not really an artist, you're just a scrapbooker. It's like, it's like asking a painter, how how are your crafts? How's your yeah, how's your, how's the craft going? Have you, have you have you sold anything at the Park Avenue Fest? I gotta go work in my studio. You mean your craft room? <laughs> no, mom, I'm an artist with my work in a gallery. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's, that's really wonderful. <laughs> that's, oh my god. Yeah, so that section that section is fine. Um, not my favorite, but it, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's a it's a pretty uh it's one where she's very immersed in this, and I, then I think. The cellar is where this really starts to take off. Although I did have a question on that first page of the cellar on 61. And I wonder if this is also supposed to be a uh, um, one of the like intentional mistakes that she makes. But in the very first section, she's talking about visiting an ex expensive migraine doctor. That didn't help. But I visited an expensive dermatologist and it helped for my mood, but the headaches got worse. Quote, you are never given a dream without also being granted the power to make it come true, says the dermatologist pamphlet. You may have to work at it, however. Dermatologists don't have shit like that, do they? I don't think so. <laughs> I can't imagine. Like, like usually, usually if a dermatologist like, told me that, I'd be like, you know what? Give me some fucking retin-A, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I'm not here for, for you to give me some some sort of yeah. cliched cat hanging onto a tree stuff. Like, no, I want medicine like, so that my face doesn't look like a mess. <laughs> Buy my face, buy this expensive face cream and your life yeah. will be better is usually kind of more of the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nobody likes looking at you now. Just just buy this cream. You'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. No one will love no one will love you with crow's feet on your eyes. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> oh God. You have the power to change it, but not through your own thinking, but through this yeah. nice seven hundred dollar <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> cream. Apply twice daily. Want more Instagram follows? <laughs> Fix your face. <laughs> That's kind of a pamphlet. Yeah. <laughs> have you this is this is not appropriate for this podcast, but I'm gonna say it anyways because it came to mind. Have you noticed that there have been an extremely high number of murders of Instagram influencers recently? Like I might be this might be recency bias mm. and confirmation bias, but every day that I check my newsfeed on my Apple phone, it will have, you know, some some woman has been murdered and it'll be like Instagram influencer, like found it and stuffed into suitcase. And the next day it was like Instagram follow in, in, um, Instagram influencer found murdered blank. I feel like every day there's another one of these and it's kind of freaking me out. Like, I don't, I don't, I no, don't I, like this when world. I read though, when I read those, I can't get past the fact that Instagram influencer or social Influencers. media influencer is a word now. Like it's just, it's just out there that one, we all accept and agree. One woman who was killed had 85,000 followers and she was known for like just taking pictures in hotel lobbies for where she was traveling. And the last Instagram photo she has is just blue. It's just the sky. I don't understand the world, but like oh, she doesn't deserve to die. Like I, was, I'm afraid that Instagram is creating like real true monsters in the world who like see yeah, these people maybe. and think that they're close to them in some way and are like weird. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I'm afraid to check my, my mail because there's probably another one. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so speaking of horror I've stories, I've heard though there there might be something too where I think on Instagram they're gonna 
start getting rid of the that shows you followers because they're worried about how it's it's like making like kids want to kill themselves because they're not getting enough followers or it's messing with people or there there's like fake there's all those fake uh fake accounts to the way like twitter like you get fake twitter Twitter followers they want to get rid of followers to get rid of bots and fake accounts and stuff that would be smart i mean then who would how would how would we know how do we know who the most famous Who's influencing is? now? Influencing. How do I know who's important? Who am I supposed yeah. to pay to like use my skin cream from my dermatologist? <laughs> Which picture of somebody like pulling somebody by their arm and you take a picture of pulling their arm? How am I supposed to know which one of those to look at? <laughs> <laughs> oh Whose feet by the pool am I supposed to be looking at as they cross their feet and go down the leg? Like, I, need, although, I, need, although, I need those. I need the, one, the good ones. <laughs> although on the upside, the second they take that off, I have 25,000 followers and you can't prove otherwise. <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna say the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just tell that. So the 62 has a great bit, like talking about how she's a horror story. She's afraid of becoming a horror story. Blah, blah blah. But then there's this great bit. But I knew at once that a human who just lies in bed, 25 years old, who gives up, stops living, is going to die. That's how it is. Later, an American publishing executive will ask me why I've written a book. And Dad will read through my response before I send it. You can't oh, write that can't you're. That. You, you can't write that you're going to die if you didn't write the book. He'll say to me, I'll agree with them even if I don't agree. And I wonder if that publishing executive is John O'Brien. So I think that he's going to come up in here. But he's the only. They're the only American publisher that's published her book. So. I suspect that's who that would be, unless it's someone else who inquired and then whatever. But this is the part, this section is where she starts to get more witty. Is that, a, yeah, is that an odd question for, a, I mean, as a publisher, is that an odd question to ask? I've, I've never asked anyone that because I feel like the answer is like, well, I don't know, I mean, existentially, like what else am I gonna do? Like, I didn't really like, <laughs> I'm facing the dark black oh. void and I just wanted well, to like a, you know, make a mark. like. What the fuck are you doing to me? That's like a question you don't ask someone. It's like a job interview question. Why do you want this job? Well, there's this thing called food that I enjoy buying. And uh, without your job, like. Although, let me contextualize this. And I think it does make sense. But she's leaving out the context to make it funnier. Is he probably asked, why did you as a 25 year old decide to write about a nine year old woman who is about to die? Yeah, yeah. And then you could be like, oh, yeah, yeah, because whatever i had this experience because otherwise you're like why are you doing this like you're young <laughs> you're not you're not an old person but this is the part where she gets funnier like the the bit about like how her she goes to get her stuff from eric's and he writes normal socks on the cardboard box as if there'd be yeah. normal socks on a different one um and like the bit about his his name maybe so i fell in love with eric fial or fial i fell in love with him because of that boring name <laughs> because i thought he was a ladies man <laughs> <laughs> he's super this part this is my favorite part or then and there's the other humor too of the misunderstanding of I'm, I'm going to take my dog to go pee in the woods it's like oh i want to go pee in the woods too yeah, yeah. oh wait the dog's gonna be peeing in the woods right like little things like that <laughs> who doesn't like to pee in the woods to be honest it's automatically fun um mentions lance armstrong who's uh always <laughs> always relevant don't lose hope <laughs> <laughs> Super. there's so many the, the pop culture references in this in this section and then the other one are very odd in a way like they're very of this moment of the moment that she wrote this and very poppy so like the alchemist will come up in a minute and then like the pop song that she's singing which i haven't looked for yet but I, i'm sure exists um and lance armstrong like these are like the top level it's not like it's it's interesting because it's not like a lot there are some of the norwegian references like the norwegian pop songs but there's a bachelorette reference. But there's a bachelorette reference. Um, idol, when it was Norwegian Idol, it was like, we know American Idol, so just Idol makes sense. Like, everyone knows these references. They're not, I mean, we don't know all of them, but we know the majority of them, and it makes it feel almost more international or something. And other, other products, too, that like uh, Late Night, like whatever the, yeah. the version of Late Night is that's there. Yeah. 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 Oh man, and then yeah. So this. But is maybe the, maybe the the reason the humor kind of grows and expands here is because there's the added, the added um, like pain and sorrow of the breakup along with the physical ailment. So it is a little bit. I mean, it's like a it's a kind of dark sort of humor, but I love it. I, I think yeah, this just gets going like really going. Like we're getting close to my favorite part. Um, I think she's really good, and she's really good at it too. Because yeah. Yeah, it, it's smart. It's quick. It's cutting. Um, and oh yeah, the, like, I, and I'm missing a lot of the wordplay stuff. So there's the really smart humor as well that yeah. totally missed on me because I don't translate. 
I think that that's going to get more, I, I might be wrong, but I think that that might come up more throughout the rest of the book. Like, I think it's a growing thing. All right, we'll see. I mean, it is interesting. Like, there's for a book that doesn't have a plot per se, except that she's going wants to write and survive. Um, it it does seem to be evolving and expanding and and making a more complex character and a more complex sense of like how the story is being told. Even if the story itself is really just like that, she's suffering yeah. from from chronic fatigue syndrome and wants to be a writer. Boom, that's it. Um, and I think it's interesting how the the sort of consciousness to use like a um. Uh, David Shieldsian sort of term of it of like how the 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 character's mind is being created and that's what we're really paying attention to the plot's not really relevant we're paying attention to like how the book creates this consciousness um for itself that's unique I like how that's happening and another pop culture reference is Prozac Nation which is a which is mm -hmm. a, also like very clear and very uh and one that everyone knows like I can't imagine anyone's not aware of Prozac Nation oh and, and Kurt Cobain is mentioned and Kurt too. Cobain yeah right was that a a biography that uh, I forget when that when that book came out Prozac Nation yeah no yeah. I hate I hate myself when I wanted to or that was on that was a from... that was a quote um oh. I don't think it's it might be in a song I haven't listened to Nirvana in like a million years because I don't have nostalgia for no, the I 90s think a, <laughs> you don't want to listen to Nirvana it doesn't hold up all that well so and I'm afraid of that. I like every once in a while I'll hear someone, I'll hear like Smashing Pumpkins somewhere and be like, that song still kind of rocks. But like, fuck no, Pearl Jam Pumpkins, for yes. sure. And uh, I can't imagine Nerf, you really Pearl want, Jam, you, I just never want to hear again. If you really want to die, just listen to Sublime. No, no, no. Nope, nope, like, oh, oh dang. God. Oh God. But like, how that, is this? How is this a thing? The <laughs> fact that like 93, 94 was the peak of 90s music is really depressing. <laughs> No nah, man, you wanna you know you wanna go put on some cargo shorts. Blink one eighty two. <laughs> put on some cargo shorts, put on some sunglasses, backwards hat, play a little cornhole and put on some sublime and just love it's your life. And some, corn. and some corn to play the cornhole. Twist me open another Smirnoff ice. Okay, it's, Smirnoff ice. That was awesome. it's summertime, bitches. <laughs> like weird milky looking malt liquor that can refresh you. What was that short-lived Jack Daniels uh, lemon drink that they had? Oh, not Twisted Tea, not um. Yeah, one of those things. Hard, uh, hard lemonade, or I don't, I forget what it was. A new craze, it, man. At the that's beach. some sublime. That's some sublime drinking music right there. Well, that was White Claw. Every every bro <laughs> in the world has their that's going out to play their can jam game at the beach is carrying a twenty-four pack of White Claw <laughs> because. They don't, they want, their, they, want their, they want their seltzer with a little little kick to it. Sometimes you want a little <laughs> kick to your spritz water. God lord. It's like what? it's like cheap, it's like a cheap escort training beverage. A... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not quite ready for white wine spritzers just yet. So. <laughs> I'm gonna start I'm gonna start here. This is safe. I was on vacation with my mom. And she's like, uh, can I pick up some white wine so I can have white wine spritzers. So they're looking, <laughs> took her so I text her, like, what are you, a hooker? <laughs> <laughs> white wine spritzers. Just drink white wine. What do you have to put stuff in it for? Just drink it. Like, just drink it. Well, can't drink it straight. You know, I got to have this all day for the John. So like, yeah. What's wrong with you, mom? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my it's good God. times when you when you reach that level of friendship with your parents where you just call them a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> my mom wakes up early so she can study the Bible yeah. at the quiet times of the morning. So there's exactly. something funny about calling that lady a hooker. Yeah, this is true. I've met your mom. <laughs> a, I, I do a, agree with this. <laughs> in a loving way. She, a loving... She's like the most nice, nice person ever. Her, her, her goal in life is to have a house big enough where she has a dedicated craft room. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> gift gift cards to Joanne Fabrics and get me get me a crap. Oh and a, I'm gonna have a white wine spritzer today. I'm gonna go wild and out. I don't know how we went sideways on this. Oh, talking Bartles about and Nirvana. James. Bartles and James. Uh, who doesn't love a good BJ in the summer? <laughs> That's right. Uh, anyways, any. Then she starts getting anxiety attacks, which I heard someone, I heard a great quote on a different podcast yesterday where someone's like, you know, I just don't really feel emotion anymore except for anticipation and anxiety. That's really like it. Like if I'm looking forward to something, anticipate it, 
And then most of the time I just feel anxious. It's not that I don't enjoy things, but like, I don't have the same emotional enjoyment. I'm just like, I'm looking forward to that or I'm very anxious. I feel that way when I watch any kind of TV series, um, especially like now that like Netflix or uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime are putting out so much original content. God. Like you'll watch one episode of it and you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then I just get this immediate anxiety like, oh, this is gonna be terrible by episode six. I'm gonna end up hating this. And then I'm gonna be mad that I watched eight episodes of it. And then of course by like episode five, you're like, this show sucks. Why am I even watching? Like, yep. <laughs> just this is a range of emotion. I, like, uh, that's about the only time I feel anything. <laughs> Holding my daughter, nothing. Nothing. Uh, the birth of a child, nothing. Nope. Nope. Season five of a TV show. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so bad. 13 yeah, episodes is, of this. This is miserable. They're running out of plot ideas. Oh no. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, so that also page 70 has our list. That she's making these five point lists. And uh, yes, that's on the cover is uh, get well, author, study job, family. Okay. And then uh, she has her change your mind, Eric, please change your mind, which I underlined because I thought that was like a good way of like, she's going through and trying to get better and then having that sort of undercut herself every once in a while, yeah. like still wishing, still longing for him. Um, I think that's that's fun. Author is one of those funny words. What's the difference between author and writer? An uh, author is published, a writer just writes? Maybe, because I think technically an author is just one who's written. Yeah, but does written does written mean it's been published? But written maybe means like it's that's what finished. I always take it as. I would think like, I would think of published, but maybe even just finished. An author has written a book. A writer is yeah. writing. Yeah, a book. It's funny because I was on a panel one time. And every and like they tell you like for the panel thing to like put in your your name, your title, whatever stuff you've done. So I did that. I get on the panel, and everybody up there is like. It says their name, and on their name badge it says author, author, author. And then mine said writer because I wrote down writer because <laughs> I just consider myself. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like the the hack job person that's not a real author now. Like, Fuck me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I was like, everybody up there's an author, and then here I am, like jur jur journaling. journal journal. You might as well put journaling <laughs> journaler. Not even journalist, just journaler. <laughs> no, that, and that's just me. You know. That's just me being insecure, obviously, but I just, I got a kick out of off. Like, yes, I, I need to be an which, author, not a, not a writer. <laughs> which is exactly what I want to start asking you questions because her secure, insecure, like the, the vacillations over this next section about her like writing of like being great and then being horrible and then being great feels very true to life to me of like the, oh, yeah. the kind of upper tops and downs. So here's, here's a question for you. Um, okay. So she, she, I'm 72. She's planned. She's, she, uh, is thinking about um, what she's going to look like at her book release party. I plan to look like a dream at my book release party. And at the after party, I'm going to stand next to a nice man on Carl Johan and read the newspaper. And then I'll find out that I've been given rave reviews. What I wish for most of all is that someone will call the book a gem. Okay, so you have a book coming out uh, very soon. What do you mm -hmm. wish most for Do you, that someone will call your book in a review? Um. A, a tour de force debut from a stuff like all those cliches. <laughs> <laughs> you want all of them. That's what your dream is. No, uh, I don't have any right now. I'm just kind of, uh, I'm slightly terrified. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I want to get a couple bad reviews out of the way. I want, I just want to get reviewed. I yeah. guess it's probably more important than anything. Cause I think what most likely happen is like, just, it'll be ignored. Nothing. Yeah. Right. So there's that kind of like, I kind of wish for that. So I don't have to worry about reading something bad or reading some, if I read something good, I'll just be like, Oh, I'll, I'll shrug it off and just kind of be modest about it. like, oh, like they just say that about everything, like whatever, not a big deal. And if they write something bad, I'll probably be like, eh, maybe there is some truth to, yeah, I could have done better here or there. I the, don't know. It's the brain's I, lost I aversion principles, man. You I remember loss as much, you feel loss as much more than you feel gains. Yeah. If you're I'm aware actually, of that, you should not do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm At least to making more, bad decisions. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be a little more keen to, all the negative and the positive. And then like, okay. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know what they're going to do for a book release. Like, I don't know if it's going to be on Oprah or on Ellen, but either <laughs> one's fine with me. <laughs> I they, they have like, nowadays, I, I believe, that, I, I might be wrong about this, but I think that Bo Editions does something that's similar to like a gender reveal party for every new book that comes out. There's like the book reveal party and they like explode it on the back of a balloon. Yeah. yeah, a balloon floats up in the air and then just rains Joytime Killbox galley Confetti. copies all over Rochester. <laughs> no, I think, 
my, my dude, that would like, be amazing. You should rent Ooh. a hot air balloon and just throw <laughs> copies of your book out over the city with like a little note uh, and sign them. Get a jet ski and ride it down the river. Jet ski down the river? You could jump. Yeah. You could be like yeah. a, a rockadile, jump in the <laughs> deep, deep reference for only three people. But a rockadile would be like, would be the way to go. Put that on the no, cover. No, I like, I think I like my weird, silly. <laughs> like vision of myself would just be like wearing one of those uh, like blazers or sport coats that make you look authorial <laughs> as a man, right? You put on a jacket. <laughs> that guy looks like he can probably like put casual. words together. Yeah. Um, and then just drink a lot of red wine. Like, yeah. That, that's kind of all I, I just want to get hammered on red wine and try to like keep it together. Dude, man, if you're a writer though, it's always scotch. Real oh, writers okay. drink scotch. Real authors oh, drink scotch. I'm more of a writer than an author. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So some no, this is funny. There's a lot of very true, true to life stuff here that just cuts, cuts close. I really enjoyed this. That's where. I, that's what I want to get to. So she has a list of all these 31 things. That's all fine. That's fun. Um, all the things that she's sort of afraid of. That I'll have to go to speed dating in a wheelchair. Then my bottom teeth will be crooked. That I'll be afraid and in pain for the rest of my life. That I'm starting to be overweight. Like things that are both like horrifying and sort of funny at times like um i'm gonna live in mom and dad's cellar until i die yeah yeah that espen will be a remain a bachelor forever um but yeah she's clearly not a millennial because it's totally cool to go move into your mom and dad's cellar it's fine yeah no it's like Every, everybody does it if you don't do it you're a loser yeah yeah whatever you so um one of the good parts about that i really like uh in terms of the um the uh, book writing experience is on 75, where she says, my writing progresses so slowly and I worry that someone will write the exact same book as I before I finish it. I can't be the only person who's ever thought about what it's like to be 90 years old and afraid of dying. And I've even felt that pressure, writing even like blog posts being like, shit, I, I need to get this out fast because someone else is gonna do something very similar to this and beat me to it. Lit Hub's gonna have like a 24 point list that's all my <laughs> jokes. <laughs> I can't tell you how many how many students that come to the class classes I teach for creative writing, like one of their largest concerns across the board, all these people is, do I need to copyright all this material before I send anything out? So that people, like everybody's afraid they're like, everyone's gonna steal their idea, copy it. And I'm just like, look, one, your idea is probably not that good anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and two, even if they do like, even if they do steal it, like who cares? Like. It's not that original, and if the what makes it original and great is the fact that you're writing it. Just, just write it. It's fine. There's like, it's, it's a love story, them. and it doesn't work out. Not a big deal. Everybody writes that. <laughs> you can tell yours. them that as long as you print it, it's copyrighted. All right. As long as you print I, it on your printer, need, it's automatically copyrighted. I need to mail it to myself and not open it and send it certified mail, and I can open it in court to the gasp of the of the gallery. Ah, like. <laughs> Listen, Perry Mason, it's not like, it's not that. <laughs> so I have to keep There's oh like five God. minutes of every class I teach where this comes up. People I'm about. sure, I'm sure. But no, I've, I feel like I've had to pivot on the novel I'm working on because um, like certain like newsworthy events have taken place. They're like, oh, well, that was going to be a plot point. Like, I don't want to make it seem like I copied it off of like yeah. just life life there's so many people and life happens so fast like yes like it will be it will be derived by the time it comes out even if that wasn't an influence for you yeah yeah absolutely like you i was working on a book about instagram people getting murdered and now i gotta change that <laughs> yeah that could be actually a doug feldick uh mystery novel <laughs> yeah. the instagram the instagram wine mystery Everyone mm -hmm. who takes gets a, is everyone who's an Instagram influencer for wine for a particular winery starts going getting murdered. There you go. You got that shit. Being a writer is easy. I can journal all day. <laughs> Journaling is easy. Just put <laughs> your thoughts down. Done. Even, fuck. Publish Simple. It. So uh, here's the part that you said on the back of the latest membership magazine. There's a poem that says that Emmy stands for Mount Everest. That having Emmy is like climbing the world's highest mountain. And I hate that poem. It's just as good to face the truth. People have nothing to say to each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. This oh my god, everything about this is great. So page eighty, this is where I really started getting into it. Um, there's two things on here that I like. One is so she's talking about um 
uh, she read, I heard about a super smart, crazy woman who dreamt up a big hugging machine for cows to stand inside of when they're about to be slaughtered. The cows remain totally calm if something is embracing them before they die. Have you seen this? Because it's an Errol Morris documentary. It's part of his first person series that he did some years ago. And it's the first episode of that show. And it's about this woman who had like autism who designed this way for the cows to walk in a circle before they're slaughtered. I have read this in at least four books since I've seen that episode. I've heard about it so many times. It's like this weird writers like have all gravitated towards. It was a was it a film starring Hillary Swank? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea about that. I think there was a film starring Hillary Swank uh, where she plays uh, a lady that invents. Um, like I don't know, she has like a connection with. Is uh, it the one where she's a ho horse, horses or cows? I think that's the same one. It's called Million Dollar Horse Lady. Yeah, that's um, it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but then there's this great part where she's talking to the psychologist, and she's like, she's like, she asked if I ever considered suicide. No, I said surprise. Perceived it almost like an invitation. <laughs> like, because if someone's <laughs> like, you got a lot of problems, man. Have you ever thought about killing yourself? <laughs> I have. I just couldn't muster the strength. You know. Yeah. Oh man, now, Oprah is another mention. There's Tootsie another Roll Oprah. is another yeah. mention. Like these are things that, like the the references, we all can relate to. It's 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 kind of interesting to me because we usually. What does the boy call the candy pussy rolls? Yeah, I forget what the. Yeah, there is there. Some, are we missing something there with between Tootsie I and? I thought I because I thought if I were going to make a plan, I'd say booty rolls. I don't know. I'm just wondering. instead of Tootsie rolls because was, was there something different in the? We'll have to ask her. That I thought was, I marked that, was, that too. That one was lost on me. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then there's this is another question for you. So this is this is your this is <laughs> this is this is you as a, a forthcoming author. <clears throat> I scrutinize my face in the mirror above the sink as if some kind of truth might be hiding there. And the truth is that my face is starting to recover. I pass people in the line for hot dogs. Think I should relish my anonymity while I still can. I'm going to be an author soon in a part of the public domain. I'm wrong about that, but I don't know it yet. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love everything about this. I relish my anonymity while I still can. I'm going to be an author. Like, I, how many authors would you even recognize if you pass them? <laughs> Four? Uh, yeah, maybe. And Juice Carroll like, Oates, Stephen King, yeah. Colson Whitehead. Hot dogs and relish, right? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Clever, clever. No, yeah. this is the cabin part that I was thinking of. Anyways, um, but the next page is the one where it, I love it. 84 is where this this just goes for me. So you get um, the bit where she says, where he, she says, the faster you go, the shorter you are. Talking about the relativity. Oh, A-Team, Rubik's Cube, more pop culture references that are very, very, very well known. Um, the current title of the book is Larger Than Epsilon, and that's what it's going to be called until the very last second. And then it will be called something else, sort of like... Walking dogs becoming Joy Time Killbox. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just last minute, got to change everything. <laughs> it happens. It happens. And then I thought you would. I thought this was the part that you would most gravitate towards. I continue talking with Espen about sonic booms and wavelengths. I want Matea to listen for sound frequencies to determine if ambulances are coming toward or away from her. This should be possible. Cut it. Someone will tell me later on, and I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a book that is like. It, it, like one one would think that one would cut a lot of this stuff, but like it is it she's that's great that she's that's in there. Um she gets preoccupied by slow time. Lars Sabi Christensen is also a is a reference and is one of the ones that's very specifically Norwegian, but he also has been translated into English and was fairly popular back in the early two thousands for a book called The Half Brother that did really well. Um so he's like sort of known too. So it's 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 great. And then he goes into the Alchemist, which is the best, best Last quote, of, and this is my favorite quote in this book, I think. I, I marked like four, but this one's maybe my favorite. I was encouraged by reading The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, which is a weird, shitty book, and it sucks and has got cult followings that are inexplicable. I was and encouraged a movie. By, and a movie. I was encouraged by reading The Alchemist that even if I don't like what I write, it's possible that others will think it's just fine. <laughs> in other words, <laughs> I might be able to trick them. I might be able to trick millions. At least I could if I write something pseudo-religious. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love it so much. I love her like there's her like... like there's a really good line too earlier where she talked about uh, reading John Steinbeck and she should have oh, known yeah. earlier. I should have known earlier that it was good to be a socialist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so good. So good. And then the one that I really, this is the, the, the paragraph that I thought would be the one that you would most appreciate is on 84. It's October and I finished writing the book. It is 38 pages long. <laughs> I think about everything. <laughs> I started laughing. I yeah. couldn't stop. I think about everything that these pages are supposed to accomplish for me. Make me better and give me a steady <laughs> income and a husband and children. I read through the manuscript. It feels like half the book is missing. And I'm definitely not as funny as I thought I was. <laughs> On the contrary, <laughs> I tell myself that the next time I write a book, I won't plan so much ahead and I won't try to be funny. I'll re I read through my diary to see whether there are any good missing points hidden inside. There aren't. I changed the line spacing from 1.5 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> that feeling of not knowing how to write. <laughs> I love that paragraph. That's the one that I think like most like, like gets into the the spirit of like if you're a writer and you you've done this thing and it is an accomplishment and yet you're like ah oh, fuck <laughs> thirty eight pages <laughs> better mark up that that uh the line spacing. What's well, funny because like that's one of the first things I always end up when we do workshops we have to teach is like. Nobody cares how many pages it is. Everything is word count. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like switching from, what do you mean word count? What is a word count? Well, yeah. it's how many words you've written. That's what matters. It's not, I'm, like, what the hell is a page? <laughs> 250. <laughs> yeah, because if it's eight point font and single space, boy, that's a, that's a big I page. Wanna, I don't want to read 100 pages of that. <laughs> uh, 30, I thought that's... 38 pages of 1.5 spacing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, it's funny and this is the part like what, you, what you're talking about with your mom like right down a little bit below that where um she's like wants to research death but doesn't want mom and dad finding out even though they know i'm writing they don't know that i'm writing a real book <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh it's so good i love oh this. that's awesome like even like that's awesome that your book got published you know your your cousin published four books on amazon last year yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Fucking mom, like that's not, those aren't books, man. <laughs> they're like 38 pages long. Yeah, they're, they're three sex scenes involving one type of monster or another. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a real I have 99 a real cents. It's not really I got a real publisher, and I got an editor, I've got a publicist. Like oh, you know, you can go to the Amazon and put the journals right onto the Amazon. <laughs> you're you're an author. No, I'm capital R writing, hashtag am. <laughs> capital R writing? <laughs> yeah, capital R writing, am writing. Oh, my God. Oh, perfect. So frustrating. No, oh, perfect. That, well, that's, I mean, that's basically all this section that I really wanted to talk about was that, uh, especially this, this writing craft part where, like, her awareness is, like, very, it's deepening here. I love how this is, like, evolving and becoming more, interesting as it goes along i don't i and i wonder if that i feel like that's intentional that like the yeah there's like an idiotic confidence that i love yeah like like when something gets rejected like we, we talked about it in the mm -hmm. last episode where something gets rejected and it's like, well there must be something wrong because it was pretty awesome yeah what I sent in. <laughs> <laughs> must have been a mistake <laughs> must have no been a mistake. other explanation <laughs> thanks but no thanks <laughs> There is you a know, great this like I won't be able to buy a hot dog pretty soon cuz I'm going to be a world famous author. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like all the little undercutting jabs there are so good. I should never read Oh, like the poetry one. Please don't think that I can write poetry. I say, "No, I don't," says mom. So I read her the poem. Uh-huh. She says and then walks out. I should never read anything aloud for people again. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the next, the other page, page 89 is a great one too. The hair specialist determines that I have grease and fungus in my scalp as if I didn't feel bad enough already. I tell her I was recently dumped. <laughs> Just like such a great, great line. Like I can envision that as someone being like, man, your stuff's all messed up up there. And you're like, dude, I just got dumped. You should know that. That's an explanation. <laughs> fungus, whatever. So yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm really getting into this now too. Yeah, it's fun. I think the, the characters really kind of coming alive and the humor's coming out more. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's, I think that's, I feel like it is an intentional, like, that's what this is supposed to be is to like grow over time, grow this idea of, of, of her as a writer and of like what she can do and how she can write about herself and what the thought of a being writer is. And I feel like it's like almost like a practice book, like where you start out working a certain way and there's, there's like certain um uh kind of, not like self sympathetic or like she sort of wallows in her, in her disease for a minute. And then she's like, 
becomes more confident as a writer and it becomes more clear and yeah. more sharp as a writer as she's going along. And I wonder if that's, I feel like that's intentional. As we go, it's gonna become more and more advanced because she's becoming a better and better author as she's writing this and thinking about it and crafting it. There was another thing I, I told you this last night and I need to find like some of the things, but like, um, the, like there's certain lines in here that are very much like, like something that would have been in the Pessoa. Like uh, you must work relentlessly to compose the life you want up until the moment you die. Like things that are like that kind of emo poetry bits, but um, <laughs> but because they're surrounded by like this funny, this funny voice and by like the concept of what she's doing is not nearly as like, oh, there's Pessoa feeling again, like in his big I, male author way. Like this is way speaking better. Of, speaking of pseudo-religious uh, cult-like followings, Pessoa, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like so do not cross Pessoa fun. fans man they're gonna come out and find you i'm sure they are they probably we just the number of viewers for this video just went up by 75 they heard me say that and like they're now they're, they're oh, and there's comments and like yeah. oh, oh god come on guys man sorry no, read I, that I, book start to finish and tell me that it's not flawed there's a there's something too again that I, i'm really enjoying with the uh the fluctuation between not feeling like a human and then trying to like get back into feeling yeah. like a human again. And that experience that she's going through. Um, yeah, absolutely. Which is, which is, I really feel it feel like kind of like the engine that's driving everything. Yeah, I agree. So far. There is two, like one thing that, that I think we can note um, is that every one of these, every chapter is named after a space or a location um, mm -hmm. that sort of create the setting, but also maybe create a sense of like, of movement. So it's like the old folks home, his cabin, my cabin, the cellar. And then for next week, we'll finish the cellar and read the loft and read up to the zone on page 144. Um, These all sound like um, after school youth programs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you could go hang out and work on your book, <laughs> the loft. Come the to the zone. Come, come the, to the, the cellar. Come, come to the, the human, cellar. The, hu the human school. These are all right. These are all community writing program. <laughs> they are. They very much are. The human school. The old I know the folks. last one is hey. the universe. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Crafter. The Herring Factory. That sounds <laughs> they're either uh places to practice your um <laughs> what do they call it? Uh The Herring Factory is where you like rent a desk improv. Like 20, east of the river, where you rent a desk improv, for like 20 It's an improv days. place. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> the Herring Factory, free improv lessons every every third Wednesday. <laughs> come learn cellar. how to come learn the basics of and 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 and. <laughs> You're at the Herring Factory Wednesday nights. <laughs> All right, give me give me an item, and I'll tell you a true story. Uh, escalators. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me the name of the item, my profession, and how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> Do I have a volunteer? Oh God. Um, the other so one. So page ninety two, and we're going to which one? One forty three. Got it. Oh, that means I love you and pager code. Remember that? Is it really? Yeah, I also learned um, watching a documentary on uh, Mr. Rogers. That's what he kept his weight at for his whole life. One hundred forty three pounds. Yep. Wasn't that dude tall? No, I don't think so. But he worked tirelessly to stay 143 because 143 meant I love you. And so he wanted his weight to be I love you. Except in Japan, four means death. So well, that's fine, but he he's not Japan, Japanese. I, Mr. Rogers isn't I, Japanese. I, I, I want you to die. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I got to respect other, other, other modes. One, 143. Mr. That's Rogers' so, weight for his whole life. That's absurd. There, yeah. It's absurd. I have, a, I have a weight joke for you, but I'll wait till I get off here. Um, but there are... Uh, The yeah, good joke. I'll wait. <laughs> I have a wait joke, but I'll it's wait. Not really, it's just an anecdote about a baseball player. So I'm going to save it for nobody wants to hear it on here. But um, uh, the one part that you said that is also funny is this part on 87. This is, I'll say this is my favorite line, even though I've already gone through my favorite lines. But when he's talking about um, that there's so many people nowadays confessing about their Emmy on the news and on TV to serve compassion and fear to get attention for themselves or for the illness. They show pictures on the news from a seminar about chronic fatigue syndrome. The doctor is Canadian. The participants are re arranged reclining on the floor on camping beds. One woman has a blanket over her head. She's peeking out, squinting up the camera light. Symptom, light sensitivity. Rest gives hope, she says. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> It's those, little, those little daggers are like, yeah, that's why I like this book. Like, I like that sort of like, man, fuck that shit. Sort of like feeling or like even even when she blows she'll blow herself up and then like pinprick it of like i i didn't realize i'll be i'm, I'm not going to be 
a super famous author or like, you know, my anonymity will still be there. Like she does take it, take herself down at times and everyone. And that it's great. It's like little puncturing of these, like these little balloons that could be either like super sentimentalized or like the emo thing or like, or whatever. She, she has some of that and she's kind of growing past it at this point in the book and like aware of, of how that, that reflects or how that presents itself. Do you have a favorite line? Um, there are several. I'll just do this one for fun on the bottom of page 86. I pull out the newspaper clipping that I've hidden behind my blue diary, behind the binder. Learn to be an author. Ugh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> just another funny thing. I mean, I oh my God. So good. It's really, really good. Really good. Um, okay, well, cool. Well, next week, yep, we'll go through 92 to 143. Um, we may or may not have a guest next week. We'll see. This is good to test out this new streaming service that we have to use, and hopefully everyone is able to watch it or is able to watch it in the future. Um, and anyways, you can find us online at open underscore letter on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm Chad W. Post on all social media. You're Brian and Wood underscore? Yep. Brian Wood and Wood underscore. Only Wood on Twitter. Twitter. Booditions.org is where you can get order a copy of Joy Time Killbox. You can order it from your local independent store. Go to your local independent store. Tell them to order Brian's book in bulk to put it on yes. a table. Uh, put it on the front table. Sell the shit out of it. Make him I'll famous. Come to your books, I'll come to your bookstore. I'll, if it's within driving distance, I'll drive there. Let's do this. Yeah. I'm an author. That's what authors do. I can, I can relish in this anonymity for as you know, little time that I have. You only have like a month left, I think, right? Before I'm super famous. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna get <laughs> October. October. Over two months, two months, and then, uh, and then it's over. Then you won't be able yeah. to walk outside your apartment. Came by you'll hot be, dog. You'll be, you'll be trying to do your ultra marathon running, and people will be like mugging you and like yeah. asking you to find parts of their body and stuff because you're so famous. Hey, the things, the things we do to be authors. Right, to be, uh, I'm gonna go back to journaling after this. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for thanks for coming on, and we'll be back next week with more of Monster Human. Okay, I think that ends it. This is.